Welcome back to the show. Today, we're going over more space parts. We have these parts laid out in front of us in many different materials. There was only one that was used in the final part. It's currently being sold online. It's part of a battery pack for satellites. We're just going to go and show the parts we printed and uh, a little bit about why and how, and, and hopefully this is interesting to you guys. <laughs> Did I print these? No, it was mostly Jay. I think so, yeah. Yeah, we printed these back in 2019, 20, 2021, maybe? Yeah. Um, you've probably seen them before already in our materials videos from years ago. Let's talk about the actual part and the final part that was used and is in production now. Uh, and that is using Ultim 1010. So Ultim 1010 is a high temperature amorphous thermal plastic that has an FST rating of UL94V0, which means low off-gassing, low smoke, and it's self-extinguishing. So low toxic smoke coming out if it does catch fire. Now this part actually is part of a case housing for a specialized battery pack. And initially, uh, they reached out to us. Uh, this is Pumpkin Space Company. You can look them up. Um, and they reached out to us to test if we could print the part first off, can the geometry be done in this material? And then the real reason is that they were already making this part. They were already producing this in, in CNC Ultim. Uh, I don't believe they were actually doing injection mold. Uh, they were just seeing seeing it out of blocks, that sounds of, expensive. blocks of Ultim. And the thing was they needed, they needed to customize certain ones for special projects. So in order to customize them in decent volume, they wanted to try 3D printing. Rapid iteration. Yeah, rapid iteration, rapid production. They don't have to keep a ton of stuff in stock. They don't have to pay the guy to make the CNC thing that they end up making two of and then never again. You just throw it into the machine, slice, and print. So Adam Reef over at Pumpkin Space sent us these parts. Thank you, Adam. Shout out. You want to be on our show? I miss you. Actually, yeah. If you're ever in Southern California, come on down. We'll Where's on Pumpkin? I have Good question. Located in San Francisco, Pumpkin creates products used in a wide range of high-tech industries. A worldwide leader in nano-satellite market, Pumpkin Space Systems has enabled dozens. I can't read because of the background on I, mobile. Guys, you I can't your read website. either. Uh, experts in small satellite product design, embedded systems, manufacturing, and rapid turnaround. Pumpkin has delivered unique and cost-effective solutions to customers worldwide. They are ITAR registered with the USDDC with a cage code of 4LEJ8. For a guy who can't read, you're doing pretty well. <laughs> I'm faking it. Fascinating. So this is the final part. I wonder what these... Oh, yeah. Is going to go on a whole, like... I wonder if this was for 1860s. I mean, I could look it up real quick. Let's... In space, but where's my... Oh, yeah. So it's see this. So that's the part. Now this is one, a picture of the CNC part. It's an 8S battery, unless it's a 4S that's in parallel. Uh, store. If we go to the store, why would people need to buy satellite parts online? Then it is in the power and energy. <laughs> well, just like anybody else, uh, if uh, you're there and you're making stuff, you need to buy stuff. There's providers for that stuff. Well, actually, I need to make battery packs oh, for real. And this is kind of now that I know. Huh. Dude, this is a $10,000 $10, battery pack. This is called an Intelligent Protected Lithium Battery Module with SOC Reporting BM2. The BM2 uses eight high-current 18650-size lithium-ion cells and is compatible with a wide range of power systems. It's available in multiple configurations and can deliver 15 amps. 2S4P is good. Uh, yeah. It can provide, and it can deliver two, 15 amps to a load of from two identical connectors, depending on its battery configuration and chemistry, can provide up to 160 watts of power and store up to 100 watt hours of energy, or 72 watt hours for the 3S2P configuration. Charging is also very fast with configurations supporting a minimum of 5 amps during charging. Any I can other? make that at home. I have, I have advanced battery, Bluetooth battery BMS boards. Yep. Here's more specifics. The BM2 is a thermally and vibration optimized via its high strength frame. It can be mounted directly into any pumpkin supernova structure, which I think is their CubeSat, and it can be adapted to a 1U to a 3U CubeSat class structures. A six signal 14 wire interface harness enables connections to the standard 104 pin CubeSat bus via oh, a suitable where it adapter. Is. So if you want to charge $10,000 for an 18650 battery pack, you better start 3D printing. I wonder what the custom ones are, because those are the off-the-shelf. At least a million. Yeah. 
Fascinating clients, fascinating people, fascinating Very projects. Very nice people. This is what we do all day here at Vision Miner. We help people with their projects and advancing into the realm of 3D printing, additive manufacturing, rapid prototyping, you name it, with high temperature performance thermoplastics of all kinds. And if you don't need those, we've also got SLS, SLA, 3D scanners, and 3D scanning software and CAD stuff. So kind of a one-stop shop, a lot of experience, a lot of uh, people here uh, that can help you figure out your project. So give us a call or shoot us an email. We're here to help. All right, so I'm gonna go down the entire list now and let's just talk about what each material really is. This is PCTG. Surprisingly good material. No, I'm, I'm this PC, it's just regular PC. This is just polycarbonate. We've got a PCTG one somewhere, but this is just- PC, the C in PCTG has nothing to do with polycarbonate. 100% true, but I thought this was oh, okay. PCTG. PC is polycarbonate, totally different, totally yeah. separate. And then we've got two- Polycarbonate is flexible, man. In PVDF. So this is kind of a, it's a, a fluoropolymer. Fluorinated, yeah. Yeah. What's special about PVDF? It's fluorinated. <laughs> Which means it's going to be resistant to almost any Chemicals, chemical yeah. or solvent and it's or also acid difficult or base. To Fluorinated polymers are miracle polymers. The issue is with additive is that they don't really like to stick to anything but themselves. Yeah. So in the past when I've, I've, I've printed FEP and that, I had to print it on, I went on Amazon and I bought FEP sheets for, you know, your uh, SLA printer. And that's the only way I could get yeah. it to go. And it still didn't want to stick. For a lot of these two and every other material, whether you're using a hobbyist printer and printing PLA and PETG and ABS or ASA, or you're doing CF nylon, polycarbonate, all the way up into the ultimate peak and high temp stuff, we've made this stuff. It's called nanopolymer adhesive and it works on just about every thermoplastic that we've tried, except for polypropylene. And well, that yeah. guy came up to me at the show and was like, look, I used nano it and printed, I pr printed a Benchy in, in POM, Delrin, straight up. And I was like, we tried, it didn't work. He tried, it worked. So apparently it works with that too. You can get this anywhere online, resellers around the world, visionminer.com or Amazon, you name it. But really you should go buy it from one of our resellers because those guys are awesome for uh, supporting and caring and supporting the local community. So go buy some nano from your favorite 3D printer reseller. That's where you wanna go. Next, we've got HTN. Now, unfortunately, this has uh, essentially died as a filament. It went to the grave with Ascentium. Ascentium was an incredible company that made some really cool materials years ago. And they were, uh, unfortunately, the business plan didn't work out and they were purchased by Nexa 3D and now Nexa 3D is on its way out. So it doesn't look like we'll be getting any more of this or that spectacular HTN. Don't zoom in on me laughing at that. That's not funny. <laughs> It's funny to me, but I'm broken. But yeah, for a, a PPA, a performance polyamide, a high temperature nylon, this stuff was incredible. Now we will have an analogous material from 3DX Tech very soon, uh, but that's coming in the summertime. Supply chains, I don't control them. It is what it is. So we'll have more of that coming down the road, along with the HDNCF, which is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, high temperature, or just carbon fiber nylon in general. Uh, next we've got... Are these both PSU or are they PPSU and, oh wow, all right. Which one's which? Can you tell the difference? It's a very slight oh, I can see, tone, but I didn't see it. And I have seen it change over the years depending on the batch. I know, that's the thing. Yeah. So I've seen very yellow, yeah. PPSF slash U, PPSU, I don't know what the right one is yeah. because they use both. We have PSU, polysulfone. Nailed it. And PPSU, which is polyphenol. Polyphenylene sulfide. sulfide. Yeah. Poly polyphenylene sulfide. Yeah. That should be a quiz. I should ask you, like, what does it mean? What is, what, what's, okay, here's the hardest one. What's ABS? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Acropodenylene sulfide. Acropodenylene sul yeah. Yeah. No one knows. It's tirade. <laughs> no one actually no knows. No one knows. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this used to be poor men's Ultim because it was cheaper than Ultim, but now it's more expensive than Ultim, so we can't really call it that. Uh, and my favorite material. It might change next week. We'll see. Ha. My favorite material. As your Slack handle actually demonstrates, Ultim 1010, very high temperature material, amorphous, 217 Celsius TG, operating temps higher than that. And uh, basically, actually, I don't think the operating temps would be higher than that. Material scientists have told me, no, that's impossible. It will not work. You will not be able to do it. And meanwhile, I'm holding the part in my hand behind my back and being like, this guy's really adamant. And then I'll pull the part. I'm like, look, I don't know how I did it. 
but I did it and it worked. So what now? That's the difference between actual engineers and us. Be like, oh yeah, we'll I don't know out. how I did it, but I did it. But I did it. <laughs> and then of course the sister material, Ultim ninety eighty five. Is it the brother material? That is is, is Ultim ninety eighty five. It's the little brother. The little brother. I don't like it. I love it. Yeah, I know. I love it. It's easy. It prints well. It flows well. Yeah, you there's no parts. challenge. <laughs> all right, all right. If you want you to get point. this, isn't even. You can get it way more golden and oh, yeah. colored. Oh yeah, Ultimate Ten Ten is definitely. That's why I'm the god. But no, it's so beautiful when it's like. It, there's no way you could add colorant or anything to another material to make it look. Oh like yeah, it. no, like, no chance. Yeah, it, there. That's a ultimate only thing. In fact, I want automotive to start using ultim under the hood just because it's so beautiful it can also oh, be like dude a, 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 a statement piece but also incredibly functional if you want to see it under the hood or under the microscope check out our latest our last video a few weeks ago uh where we look at a bunch of parts under the microscope including ultim 1010 and then we break it and then we look at it very <laughs> fun cool video and if you want to buy some go to visionminer.com materials we got this and many more materials available for your 3d printer and uh, how much more announcer light can I make this sound? I don't know. Go to visionminer.com and you can have a fantastic journey and experience with our material portfolio. And uh, anyway, yeah, uh, we sell all this stuff. Just make sure you know that. Back all the, the good video. stuff we sell. PPS, polyphenol sulfide. I don't care about that anymore because the color oh, wait, changed. No, PPS is polyphenylene sulfide. sulfide. PPSU is polyphenylene sulfone. Sulfone versus sulfide, very different. What's, What's the PPSU difference? PPSU then? PPS is semicrystalline, and it is insoluble in any material or any acid known to man under 200 Celsius. So if you need chemical resistance, look no further than PPS. Also, yeah, people you, sleep on that material. If you throw carbon fiber in it, because of the crystallinity is so tight, and that's what gives it the chemical resistance, is the crystalline structure being so tight. Sounds like glass. Well, that's cold. And well, this is when cold, they're CF unfilled. and hot. Yeah, oh, it, it sounds like glass. It's crazy. We'll do a video. It on sounds that. like if you when you drop it when it comes off the bill plate, like drop it down. It sounds like it's going to shatter. But. Yeah. Well, that's the other material that Ascentium had that's no longer around. That was them. That was them. And now 3D X Tech once again. High temperature nylon. This is a PPA nylon, so it's higher temperature operating, but very similar to regular nylon. What six is or twelve, even eleven. Polyamide. No, polyamide. What is the A? I mean, what's, what, what's the difference between PA6 and PP? What's the uh, extra P? From what I know, performance. Oh, my God. Polyamide. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if there's an actual. What's the additive? If somebody knows exactly how high temperature nylon or PPA is made, please leave us a description in the comments. Man, we should do a video just about additives. Yeah. yeah. Would you guys like to what's, see that? What's tough PLA? If you guys want to see that video, let's What's throw it. Pro yeah, seriously, PLA? so What's many PLAs. Because like, do you remember back in the uh, back in the day, <laughs> PLA was like yeah, one seventy to one ninety, and now it's like two thirty five. It is. Yeah. Well, you remember all the peaks we got? They're like, oh, it's peak, but it's easier. And I was like, guys, that's not peak, bro. And that really matters because now everybody's using nylons, and it's not nylon. Yeah, yeah, it has a similar properties as nylon, but it's not regular nylon. So if you need regular nylon, you can't use any of that stuff. Yeah, now, nylon great. is like unprintable. Now, it, I, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's amazing that you can print it and less warping and all these things on all these different printers out there. So it's good for the world and community, but in specific engineering stuff, it's not a good thing. Yeah, we should, we should break down what these things actually are because there's some EPACF right behind me and in there. And like, what is E? Yeah, I easy. love that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. it looks really good, but that's probably because they use the what is it? Uh, what what is the good carbon fiber? Chopped, chopped, milled, milled is powder. The powder. It's because it's probably because. Be warned if you're buying a PLA, that's carbon fiber. You just have carbon fiber powder in there. It gives it a really nice finish, but in terms of strength, it's uh, maybe something. No, but it's actually weakens it. They yeah. did studies back in the day because there's less PLA. Yeah. yeah, with ABS, it just created more voids and therefore less adhesion. Uh, when you get the chopped fibers, it goes through the, the material planks. Exactly, it's like a skeleton. That's yeah. why you get more rigidity. That's why they're incredibly brittle. W not once they're printed, they're not. They're very strong, but that material you'll see. The higher the percentage pack, the more brittle it is, yeah. And you have to be very careful about how you get it into your machine and exactly. where it's going to be fed from. But, man, yeah. that stuff's if cool. The, if it tries to make it to the extruder and it's bent too sharp, bend, it's, yeah. it's going to break and you won't be able to print anything. Carbon fiber Ultim. 
CF Peak, of course. And then uh, polypropylene CF and CF polycarbonate versus polypropylene. Wow. I mean, dude, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but let's show you the difference. Polypropylene, polycarbonate. Well, actually, if we're going to do that, then let's do Ultim and Peak, because that was a huge difference I was surprised by. So. CF Peak. CF Ultim. You know, normal Ultim. Is that, how similar does that sound to the CF Ultim? Now drop the CF one. Is it like, okay. No, a little bit more. You can definitely hear the, the higher modulus with the carbon fiber. And HTN. Just dropping stuff. Yeah, so PPCF. Well, that's just because of how it landed. PPCF. Yeah. Which one's which? Make the, oh. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this content, please leave a comment below. Like it to let us know, or subscribe if you want to see more of it. But uh, we love making this content. Hopefully, it's educating and inspiring you to do more 3D printing. And if you need supplies, you know where to go, visionminer.com, for anything you might need. SLA, SLS, FDM, scanners, or software. 2D printing. We'll get you ink. I mean, if we have. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day. We'll see you on the next video.